Chapter 9 February 1959 Tsinghai Tibet Plateau We chose this implosive device because it was more sophisticated, yet required less nuclear material, said Igor, his finger nudging at a drawing. So he listened, equally impressed by his vast knowledge of the A-bomb's core and his precise and logical explanations. She thought his strong Russian accent only enhanced his excellent English and made him uniquely attractive. Trying to concentrate on his words, she looked down at the papers spread across the table, full of respect for all he had accomplished. But is it less powerful compared to other types of devices? Not necessarily. It's essentially like our own bodies. Some people eat a lot but still feel hungry and have no energy while others can eat less but be full of energy, depending on their body's metabolism and other characteristics. He swallowed the last of the tea in his cup and said, Let's go. They looked like surgeons in their white scrubs, entering a mysterious theatre. The narrow steel steps led them up to the second floor, a mezzanine where they could overlook the core of the nuclear cascade. This was the final step in preparing the active material, turning highly enriched uranium from liquid into a small, solid pellet. Still outside the heavy door, they took a few minutes to rest after the steep climb, letting their breathing steady. Oddly, Zoe liked wearing this clumsy outfit, with its fire-retardant overalls, rubber shoe scuffs and plastic mask. The gear made her feel special, privileged, to be conducting the most important and demanding scientific work in the history of humanity. Under the brilliant lights, the white suits glowed amid the dingy maze of pipes. Their two research assistants were already waiting inside. Zoe and Igor worked silently, comfortable both with the procedure and their confidence in each other, despite the risk of explosion. Often, their eyes met briefly, exchanging mutual respect without any words. The time passed so quickly, they barely noticed the clumsy suits and their bodies saturated with sweat. By the time they completed the session, it was lunchtime, so the group of four went to the canteen together. Living in the facility was like living in a vacuum, with limited things to talk about outside of their research, so he couldn't help but start the conversation on another work topic. Recently I read an article about neutron bombs. I'm sure you'd know more about this than me, but I'm fascinated by the idea of a weapon that produces a minimal blast while releasing high-energy neutrons that can penetrate even well-shielded structures with lethal doses of gamma rays. I never imagined using neutrons that way when I was doing my master's research at Berkeley. I wonder why we don't just make the neutron bomb to reduce the number of casualties and damage and decrease the amount of radioactive impact on the environment. She looked at him, eagerly awaiting his opinion. To her, the purpose of nuclear bombs was to defend China and deter their enemies, not to exterminate an entire country from the face of the earth the way the A-bomb and H-bomb would. Igor was surprised to hear she considered the impact of her research on humanity. Her generosity and concern made him ashamed of how he had avoided this issue, bearing his questions and reservations fifteen years ago. Keeping his personal misgivings to himself, he still tried to defend his work. Yes, theoretically the neutron bomb causes minimal damage to the infrastructure, but kills most living things with limited radiation. It tends to dissipate quickly after the explosion. However, psychologically it does not have the same effective impact as other thermonuclear bombs, which level entire cities, because it looks like a new kind of conventional weapon. That's why the Americans still want to develop more powerful, more sophisticated, more destructive A-bombs, H-bombs and missiles, but not neutron bombs even though they know better than anyone how much damage the nuclear bombs caused in Japan. That's why my father... He paused for a few seconds, 
licked his lips and ended his explanation. He was cautious about Russia developing nuclear weapons. Hello, Comrade Igor. Good to see you have adapted to the Chinese food. Major Leo greeted him loudly, putting down his lunchbox on the table next to Zoe. Igor smiled, although he didn't know what he meant. She greeted him with a nod and immediately moved her body away from him intuitively. She was afraid that people would link the two of them together, which she had tried to deny with very limited success. The two research assistants quickly shoveled down their lunch and left. Clearly, they didn't want Major Leo to think that they were blocking his chase. Zoe hoped that Igor would not leave her alone, so she quickly posed a question while trying to find a subtle way to get rid of Major Leo, but not arouse his anger. What does your father do? He slowly chewed the bun in his mouth, pondering how to answer. For years, he had avoided mentioning his father to people. He didn't want people to tarnish father's reputation further, because he had died a counter-revolutionary criminal. Father was my hero, he suddenly had an urge to tell her, a person he could trust. In fact, he really liked her. She was attractive, professional and kind. He even half hoped they could be a pair one day but he was not confident enough to show his admiration yet. This could be the opportunity now to win her trust, he thought, although he was unprepared for how the relationship might unfold. I was born in Germany, and I'm Jewish. Somehow, he felt comfortable revealing his non-Russian identity to Zoe, which he had never disclosed to other people. Maybe he wanted to test her reaction, or maybe deep down, he just didn't want to be a Russian. Zoe knew that the Jews had suffered terribly in Germany during World War II, but had no specific knowledge of Jewish communities in Russia. You must have suffered a lot under Hitler's reign. She looked at him sympathetically and said warmly, Living in Russia helps you leave all the pain behind. For a moment, Kaczynski knitted his brows. He hadn't expected her initial reaction to be so simply innocent. He took a breath and shared his secret. The Kaczynski family have been in Germany for generations. My father, Albert, was one of the top nuclear scientists at Berlin University practically since the beginning of the century. Soon after Saudi and Rutherford discovered the transmutation of atoms, he successfully performed an experiment confirming the theory that the radioactivity of metal bombarded with neutrons was a hundred times greater when the neutrons had previously been slowed down by water or paraffin. It was a historic turning point in nuclear science, one that led to the focus on uranium, the heaviest of all metals. Father's research team made a breakthrough in atomic theoretical studies. He was studying the principle of nuclear reaction between uranium piles, and discovered that the bombardment of neutrons on uranium gives rise to a new element, or perhaps even several new ones, in which the chain reaction is controlled. In contrast, when the avalanche of neutrons is allowed to accelerate, the chain reaction grows to the point of explosion. The power from the reaction is enormous and uncontrollable. At that time, Nazi Germany was becoming a military dictatorship, and father sensed the war was imminent, as Hitler became more and more ambitious. So he kept his findings secret. Only a few people inside the top nuclear science circles knew about it. He wanted to make sure that they would be used for peaceful purposes. Father was an idealist, always very optimistic. He declined a professorship offer in America, just before the war broke out because he wanted to stay in Germany to help preserve German heritage. He stayed even though he knew Hitler was crazy, even when the Nazis were starting to suppress and expel the Jews. What a brave man! Without warning, Zoe's thoughts flashed back to the moment when she had burned John's photos and letters. A chill coursed through her body. 
how weak she was by comparison. She had succumbed to pressure and given up so easily. I wish I had his courage and resilience. He nodded. Still, he didn't expect misfortune would fall directly on his own head. He was arrested as soon as the war started. We, my mother, my sister and I, we didn't see him for months. I assume because he was a Jew. But then why didn't they arrest the rest of you as well? Zoe asked, confused. Oh, my mother is not a Jew. Plus, I guess they hadn't really decided what to do with my father. With his expertise in nuclear science, he was far too valuable to waste away in concentration camp. Instead, he was conditionally released and sent to a secret military laboratory, along with a group of other scientists tasked with inventing a nuclear bomb for Hitler. We all lived there for about four years, isolated from the outside world. My sister and I went to school inside the compound. That's how we survived the Nazi genocide. Igor paused, searching her face, and then plunged on. While his disappearance from the world stage of nuclear physics aroused a lot of confusion and anxiety among top-level scientists, the U.S. put its nuclear weapon program on fast track. Somehow, even under the Gestapo's tight observation, Father and the other scientists continued the project while effectively keeping the Department of Army Weapons in the dark about their progress. Without their obstruction, it's quite possible that Germany would have created the atomic bomb first, and World War II would have ended quite differently. In 1945, on the day the Soviet tanks rolled into the compound, Father was still in his laboratory with his colleagues. The Russians were surprised to find him still alive. Without the Americans there, they took most of the scientists, materials, even equipment back to Russia. Before the war formally ended, he was already resettled in Moscow. Father continued to research and lecture. Thus far, Major Leo had been restraining himself well. Although he couldn't understand English, he felt discriminated by the intellectuals particularly those speaking foreign languages. Now he finished his lunch and made lots of noise deliberately to get Zoe's attention. He moved his eyes from his empty lunchbox to Zoe and called, Comrade Bang, I... Zoe was so absorbed by Igor's story that she barely noticed Major Leo's impatient expression. That's good. Finally your father could use his brilliant mind for a good cause said Zoe. She took a deep breath, as if to relieve the pain of his father's adversity from her mind, and waited for him to continue. But Igor was lost in his memories. His eyes went to the window, blank and distant, like a ghost. He seemed lost in his own world, his idealism struggling against both the past he resented and an uncertain future. For so many years his father had been his hero and role model. That was why he became a nuclear scientist. Then, in 1948, his father and other scientists had signed a letter calling on the Russian government and the rest of the world to give up all nuclear weapons. Igor remembered, with perfect clarity, the moment when his father was taken away. But it wasn't until years later, right before he was selected to come to China, that his mother gave him his father's diary, and he learned the bitter truth that destroyed his perfect world and his faith in Russia. In the diary, Igor found a frightful passage. They knocked out my teeth to remove any barriers, so I could more easily tell them what they wanted to know. But I had the last laugh. They forgot that not having any teeth would make it harder for them to understand my speech. <laughs> Igor had no idea why his family suffered both in Russia and Germany, and he hated to confess that he didn't like Russia either, the country that had abducted him. But he also felt ashamed for not living up to his father's standard of courage, 
that he hadn't refused to build bombs for the Soviet regime. Coming to China was the only way he could find to avoid supporting the Soviet nuclear weapons program. His actions were weak and passive. Unconsciously, he chewed on a fingernail, as if to punish himself for his lack of courage. His eyes dulled with the pain of remembering. He didn't want to tell Zoe that his father had died in a gulag in Siberia, refusing to give her the idea that something like that could happen again. He wanted her to be happy, to be safe. He knew he had to control his mouth to avoid ending up like his father, killed for being too outspoken. After all, China was also a communist country, Russia's brother. He glanced at her and then dropped his eyes back to his cup. Unfortunately, father didn't live long enough after that. He died in 1950 about a year after the Soviet Union detonated its first nuclear bomb. A rush of sorrow overwhelmed Zoe, intensifying her feelings for him. I wish I could have met him, she said, and put her hand on his, her delicate fingers stroking his gently. Suddenly Major Leo stood up, threw a nasty look at both of them, and stomped away abruptly. Staring at his solid back, she felt speechless and cold. For a minute or two, they sat quietly, both lost in their thoughts. She guessed at the reason his father agreed to be part of the Soviet bomb instead. Unlike Nazi Germany, the communist bomb was for self-defense, she believed, so Igor continued his father's work. She looked at Igor, full of admiration and her tension about Major Leo disappeared. Commissar Chu said you received a medal for your contributions to nuclear science. Tell me about it. That's nothing. I just did what I was told. The Soviets could have just as easily produced the hydrogen bomb without me. He shrugged, showing no interest in sharing any details of the honor, which was a shame to him. You're being so modest. So he respected his excellent scientist's character. I heard that you graduated from Berkeley. Igor cleverly changed the topic. He also wanted to find out more about her. Zoe nodded gently. For a while, there was silence. It was the first time someone had mentioned her American experience since she had arrived at the number 221 plant, where she thought she had finally buried her troublesome history in secret. She was not ready to reveal her past yet. She had learned to avoid risks, to not become a target of class struggle again. But it felt rude to ignore the conversation. After all, he had told her of his past. But I have to be careful, she told herself. Yes, I studied nuclear science for a few years there. And now... I'm very happy contributing to China's nuclear defense. His eyes studied her facial expression and words carefully, wondering if she really meant what she said. He could not believe someone in this world would give up living in America, unless they were mad. Let's go. It's late and I'm exhausted, Zoe said calmly, shutting down the conversation. She got up and headed toward the door, Igor trailing behind her.